With Canva's Magic Edit tool, you can replace one subject with another. So you can get results like this, but how can we take this even farther? Now that Affinity is free for everyone, can we use those Canva tools within Affinity to make this work even better and to have even more options? Let's take a look in this video. Okay, in this tutorial, we're gonna look at the Magic Edit tool here in Canva. How do we replace an object with another object in the scene? And then we're gonna jump over to Affinity, which is free now and has Canva Pro AI tools built in if you have that Canva Pro uh, subscription. And we're gonna look at the equivalent to the Magic Edit tool in there, the Generative Fill tool. And we're gonna look at how you can get results where you can actually make some slight improvements because of the other tools you have in that affinity suite. Uh, so let's start here though inside of Canva and we'll start by trying to replace this cat. So let's imagine that maybe I have a dog walking business or something where like dogs are the, my focus. That's what I wanna do uh, and share with my audience images with dogs. Uh, so this cat here, he's pretty cute, but I think I want this to be a dog. So how would I go ahead and make that replacement here using the Canva AI tools? Well, first you gotta make sure you have the image selected. So I have the image selected, and then we're gonna come up under the edit menu, and we're gonna look and we're gonna find this magic edit tool. So right here, this is gonna let us replace one object with another object. So we're gonna make a selection, and then we're gonna go ahead and tell it what we want to do with that selection. So you can click on the scene like this, and it will attempt to find a subject. So if you go and click here, and it's attempting to find the subject for you. So it basically did find the cat here, but it's miss missing the whiskers. So I might go ahead and use the brush tool and the brush tool is going to allow me to sort of paint my own area that I want to have replaced. So I'm going to go all the way around the cat here. I'm going to also make sure I get these whiskers because I don't want those just hanging out when they don't match up with the subject. And I'm going to come down here and just go slightly onto his arm, just sort of making sure I get all the cat here and all the fur and get that whole area come in here and create my, increase my brush size. Go ahead and just make sure I get this all filled in. Uh, and so I'm defining the area I want it to replace. Now once you have that, you're gonna come describe what you wanna do. So I'm just gonna simply type dog. Now I'm hoping that the scene is smart enough here to make use of the information and the context of this scene. So this dog is looking towards this book. So I'm hoping it's gonna make you know, use contextual clues from the scene itself and not put something in here that looks ridiculous, but let's run this and see what kind of results I get. So I'm gonna go ahead and click generate. Now, when you run the magic edit tool here inside of Canva, it's gonna give you four results and you can check out those different results. And then of course you can also run more, uh, run the tool more time. So let's see if I look here, that's not bad. Uh, it does look like it's kind of putting some weird blur on it a little bit. This one, it's okay. This one here, sort of okay. So this one's not bad, but again, it's just kind of soft focus uh, and I'm not sure about all those. So let's run it one more time just to see what kind of results we can get here. Uh, and then after this, I'm gonna go run this inside of Affinity and see what kind of results we get in Affinity. Uh, so this one here, uh, this one's sort of looking the direction we, get, uh, we like. Here, this one here, not looking realistic. Uh, here and here. So this one's sort of okay. So I could choose this one and keep this one here. But overall, I'm not too happy with the quality here. This focus is just too soft. It's just not looking realistic. I'd like to see what I can do in Affinity with that new generative fill option. So if you're not aware yet, at Canva's World Tour event last week, they did announce that Affinity is now free. It's free for everyone and it's free forever. So this gives you some really nice additional tools now if you're a Canva user, where you can do some even more advanced edits. So if you don't have Affinity yet, you can go over to Affinity Studio slash get Affinity. I'll put that link down in the description below if you need that. You can click on it, you can come over here and you can use this sign, uh, sign up to download. Now when you're signing up, you're really just using your Canva account. Uh, that you probably already have. And again, Affinity is free, but within Affinity, they have some Canva AI tools, which you still need the Pro Canva account for. So sign up with your Pro account, and then you'll have access to those tools. So I'm gonna go ahead here and uh, open up Affinity. And within Affinity, I already have this cat image open. So we're gonna do the same thing in here where we try to replace this cat uh, with an image of a dog, but then I'm going to show you how you have some additional tricks you can do in here now that we have this more advanced tool set to maybe even get a better result. So one thing to know about the Affinity user interface is that you do have different workspaces 
you can switch to depending on what sort of work you're doing. So if you were doing something with vector art, you could click on this vector tab. This is for pixel here, if you're working on photo retouching. And of course, if you're doing something with print design, you could go over under layout. And there's some other tabs here, including this Canva AI tool. So all you really need to know is, as you click on these different tabs up here, you are sort of changing the tools that are showing up. The other ones aren't, you know, gone. You can still access them. All you're really doing here is just changing the workspace you're in. So Canva AI, uh, you come under here and you get some Canva AI tools like the remove background tool and some other tools over here. But I'm actually just going to stay under this pixel interface. I'm working with a roster graphic here. I want to make some edits to this. And some of those Canva AI tools you're still going to be able to access even though you're not under the Canva AI interface, okay? So these just give you a different way to look at things, but you still may be able to access certain tools under a different panel than where you might think to go. So I'm gonna start here, and what I wanna do is just make a base selection first. So down here I have my lasso tool, but if you're not seeing it, you could come down here under the selection. If you use this little drop down arrow, you can see more options. So whenever you see that arrow, there are some other tools nested under there. So you might start on something like the rectangular marquee, uh, the elliptical marquee, Key, but I'm going to go down to this freehand selection tool. That's just going to let me drag out whatever sort of shape area I want. Uh, so I'm going to drag around the cat just like we did inside of Canva where we painted sort of selection. I'm going to just drag. So left mouse button, just going to hold it down. And I'm going to drag again, once again, making sure I get all of these whiskers, all this fur going just beyond the edge of my book. Again, just into his hand here. So I'm giving it a little bit of an area of overlap. But then I'm also just making sure that I get all of this hair, all of the area of the cat. And I'm just going to go all the way around like that. And then when I release it, it makes this dotted line. That shows me what I have selection, what I have selected. That shows me I have this active selection here. So now that I have that up here at the top, I'm going to see this generative fill icon. And again, you see this crown? We're used to seeing that crown inside of Canva. Uh, when there's a pro feature. Now we're starting to see how some of this integration is existing between Canva and now here within Affinity. So again, Affinity, totally free. Everything that was in Affinity before, you get now for free, but you still need a Canva Pro subscription to access some of the Canva AI tools that are now in here. So we're gonna use this generative fill. So we saw the type of results we get before. I'm hoping it's gonna work a little differently in this software, and we're gonna get some even better results. But then, when we get the results, I'm gonna show you now how because we're within Affinity, we have more advanced tools, so we can do some things to maybe make our results even a little bit better. But I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But for now, let's go ahead and choose General Fill. And so when you do that, it's gonna give you sort of this description dialog box. So you get a prompt box like this in Canva. You get a prompt box in here. I'm gonna again, just type dog, keep it simple. Uh, I'll leave this checked, allow generation beyond selection. And then image count. This is gonna sort of determine how many images it gives back to me. Do I just want it to give me one results? Well, let's go ahead and type in three in here just so we get a few more uh, results. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply, apply. And now it's gonna go to work. It's gonna take a little while here, but it is generating for us some results. So let's see what kind of results we get to start. And then we'll see if we can do anything to improve those results that we get. Okay, so here are the results we got back. So here's variation one, and then I can just click through on the different variations. So variation two, variation three. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna say is that I just think the dogs are way more realistic than we were getting in Canva. So this does give me hope that generative fill is working a little differently in here than Magic Edit worked in Canva. And I think we're getting a little bit more advanced algorithm. So I do think the results in terms of being realistic, in terms of meeting, uh, matching the style of the scene, the lighting of the scene, I just feel like we're getting better results. So that's very good news that we might be able to jump over from Canva to Affinity here and get even better results using this generative fill versus using that magic of edit tool within Canva. Okay, so first things first, if you ever uh, do close this, it's not lost. You can still get back those variations. You would just want to double click on the layer itself and then you're bringing that back up. But let's say we want to make some changes here because I like this variation here, but let's see if I come in here and I toggle it on and off. I just think the book edge here looks more realistic. I think his arm looks a more, lo little bit more realistic. If I turn that off and get, or turn this back on and get this, we can see that this just looks like a little bit hard. This looks 
looks a little weird. Uh, so I might want to make some adjustments here. And this is where, because we are within a uh, suite of tools that is just much more advanced than Canva by itself, we have a lot of options. So the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate my background. So you can just right click on the background, go ahead and choose duplicate. You can also use the control J keyboard shortcut, and then I'm going to drag that up to the top. Now, this layer below actually has a layer mask applied to it. And what a layer mask does in uh, a program like Affinity, it lets you control what pixels on a layer are visible or partly visible, and then what ones uh, are obscured. So for example, if I were to just come in here and take my lasso tool and do some weird shape like this, and then come and apply this mask tool, then suddenly I can see that I'm showing just those pixels now, and if I want to click on the mask, I can actually twirl this open. And then the mask itself, you don't see the mask. It's just affecting what uh, is on the layer. But if you actually want to see what that mask looks like, you can hold down the Alt or Option key. Go ahead and click on that. And you can see that anything that is white is going to show all the way through. Anything that is black is going to be uh, totally hidden. And shades of gray in between are going to sort of partially appear. So I could come under here and I could go pixel. Let's apply a filter to this. Let's apply a blur. So pixel filters blur. Let's apply a Gaussian blur. That's just going to let me uh, obscure the edges like that. Go ahead and apply. And now we're applying that to the mask itself, not to the layer. If I click back on the layer, now we can see how we get this soft edge look. You're going to see that even more if I were to turn off this background layer completely. We can see that we just have this soft edge because of that mask affecting the layer. So I'm going to click on the mask itself. I'm going to go ahead and do uh, Alt Backspace just to hide it completely. Control Backspace just to show it completely. And again, that's just filling it with white versus filling it with black. I'll go ahead and turn these layers on below so we can see those again. And now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to attempt to use this masking technique to bring back the book and to bring back the arm here of this original layer. Now it's worth saying at this point that I know if you're someone coming from Canva and you don't have experience in programs like Affinity, programs like Photoshop that have masking like this, this might be a totally new concept to you. So at first it might be a little overwhelming, but I promise if you just pay attention, you start to learn these things, it is going to become second nature. And so I, I encourage you to go hit that subscribe button for this channel, because if you're coming from Canva and you want to learn Affinity, I'm going to have all the training materials on this channel to help you get up to speed. And it really is going to give you just more and more creative control when it comes to editing images. So what I'm going to do now is I want to make a selection around this arm here and around this book. And again, lots of lots of selection tools in here inside of Affinity. I'm not going to go from all, but in this particular particular tutorial, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to find this object selection tool. So with this object selection tool, I want to make sure I'm on my background, not on the mask because it's just using that white layer now. So if I go over here now, it's not finding anything because I'm on that white layer. But if I come over the background icon, make sure the background's highlighted. Now you'll notice it starts to pick out objects in the scene. And if I click on any of those, when I'm seeing this pattern, it's going to go ahead and make a selection. You can click on another part, it's going to add to that selection. So I'm basically going to select the book, this guy's pants. And then if I want to continue to add that selection, I can even switch which tool I'm using. So now I'm going to come down here. Let's go under this rectangular marquee, but let's grab this freehand selection tool. I'm going to come in here to make sure that I really get the beginning of his sleeve here. Make sure I really get all of his hand. I'm going to come up here. Just let it go all the way around this because basically I want all of this selected. I want all this to show through from the original layer. So I'll do something like that. Now, uh, I want to hide the other pixels. So with this selected, I'm just going to use this mask trick that we did before. So when you have a selection and then you apply a mask, anything that is selected is going to be filled with white. If it's not selected, it's just going to go to black. And so it's going to show through to the layer below. So I'll go ahead and mask that. And when I do, we can see that now we've brought back this dog below. So it looks really good up here. But of course, I do have an issue here where if I turn this background layer on and off, we can see that when I did that fill, it just created more of a hand that goes beyond where the original arm was. So that is something I may have to address here. But that's okay because I'm going to continue to edit this. I'm going to continue to make changes. And another thing that I want to do is I just think that this dog... He looks good, but he's a little too far forward in the scene. I want him to be a little farther back, more in the center of the chest of this person, more with his head sort of buried in this book. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt to make that edit now. 
Now before I do that, I can see that I accidentally have another mask layer here. I think I clicked that button twice. So I'm just gonna click on this mask here, click on the trash can just to throw off that. So again, I still have this mask. I just had an extra one on there, which I didn't need. So I can twirl that closed. And now I'm gonna come in here and on this layer below, I wanna sort of push this dog farther back and then maybe bring him forward so his snout is a little bit more in the book here. Uh, but since I'm making big changes to this layer, uh, transforming it a little bit, I want to maybe make sure if I make a mistake, I can get back to where I started. So sometimes what I'll do is just duplicate a layer. So I'm just going to hit Control J to duplicate this layer. I'll turn off the background one here uh, just so we have a copy in case I make a mistake. Now with this layer selected, I'm just going to click on my selection tool. So right up here, that's the V keyboard shortcut if you want to get to this move tool. But that's also going to let me transform this just by grabbing a corner point and then sort of bringing him down, bring him, bringing him in. Again, I can take care of that issue with his arm down here. So I think maybe I want him to sit more like this. Let's make him a little bit bigger. So I think maybe this is more sort of where I want him to sit in the scene. Maybe nudge him down ever so slightly. Actually, Control-Z to undo that because I accidentally nudged the wrong layer. Let's just drag him down ever so slightly. So I think maybe I want him positioned there. So I'll go ahead and click off of him for a second. Uh, so I now have sort of the corner the way I want it. I have this arm showing through from the original layer. Uh, but then, of course, we have this issue now where no longer does his shirt match up. We have all this area up here. Obviously, the cat still partially showing through. What are we going to do about this? Well, what about that? you know, fill, the generative fill tool that we already used once. Maybe we can just run this again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up under this pixel menu and choose uh, Merge Visible. And you also see that there's a keyboard shortcut there, Control Alt Shift E. So a lot of times when you're going in menus like this, you'll see a keyboard shortcut if you ever want to use that in the future. But I'm just going to choose Merge Visible. And what that does is it's going to take all these visible pixels and basically just stamp them up on a new layer. Now, on this new layer, this is where I'm going to attempt to use that, uh, that generative fill for a second time to see if I can fix all of these areas now where we have obvious inconsistencies. So I'm going to grab this uh, freehand selection tool. And what I want to do is I want to come up here because basically I need to take this area here. I need to get a little bit of that book. I need to come in here. Let's just give it a little bit of room to work here. So we're giving it some room to sort of overlap and make some corrections. We're keeping the dog, of course, but we want to come in here, give it some areas in here so it can sort of fix inconsistencies in the sweatshirt in all those areas. So I'm going to do something like that. Uh, and then with that, once again, we're going to use this generative fill for a second time. I'm going to leave it at one for now. We'll run another version of this if we need to, but I'm going to leave it at one for now. And we're going to go ahead and hit apply. So now for the second time, we're doing generative fill. Uh, since we're keeping the areas that we want, we went we went ahead, we ran generative, generative fill, we got some changes, we made some adjustments, but now we're going to run that a second time just to come in here and see if we can fix this new area after we've resized our dog here. And so if we look at that, that has done a really good job. And so now suddenly I like much better where this dog is positioned. Okay, so this is just to show you that you have this generative fill option now, which is comparable to the magic edit tool you have in Canva, but here inside of Affinity, I think it just works better. I think it just matches the lighting and scene even better. And then you have this whole other suite of tools if you need to come in here and make adjustments. So that was a look at using the magic edit tool in Canva versus using generative fill in Affinity to try to accomplish the same task. Now, at least with this example, I think we just got a lot more realistic results using that Affinity generative fill. And also because of the extra tools in there, you can just take it a lot farther. Now, yes, there is an extra learning curve that comes with Affinity, but I think it's gonna be worth it for all the additional tools you can get for all those things you can really do just to help push Canva to the next level. Because Canva's great, but there are certain things it struggles with, and that's where Affinity is gonna come into play and just give you a lot more options. Also on this channel, I'm going to help you get up to speed. So subscribe to this channel, hit that bell notification so you get notifications when there's going to be a new video. And if you have anything specifically you want to learn about Affinity or Canva, just drop a comment down below and I'll be happy to help. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Everything I do so instinctive and so passionate. Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective. I got a vendetta against people who patented. Being negative when you should be getting after it. 
I got facts over facts over tracks. This and that, spitting slow, spitting fast. I can roast, I can gas. Think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past.